uh, let's get started today we are going to talk about the portland cement concrete in chapter seven in the previous lectures uh, we learned uh, about the ingredients of concrete uh, we uh, explain the behavior of uh, aggregates whether it's fine aggregate or coarse aggregate and also we talked about the cement portland uh, cement and also we talk about the water and uh, uh, finally we talk about the admixtures so now we have uh, uh, idea about the ingredients of the concrete uh, so now we are ready in order to talk about the portland cement concrete Today, especially, we are going to talk about the mixed design. The mixed design, or sometimes we call this process, proportioning of the concrete. So the proportioning of the concrete, we are going to determine uh, the amounts of the different ingredients of the concrete, which means that I need to know how much sand I need to put to the mix, how much uh, gravel, how much cement, how much water, and how much admixtures that need to be uh, put in order to have good mixed design. So proportioning of the concrete is a process of selecting quantity of cement, sand, coarse aggregate, or the gravel, and the water in the concrete. We are going to put all of this together in order to get concrete uh, with uh, desired strength and quality. So if I have a certain amount or quantity of cement, sand, gravel, and the water, I will be able to target uh, a certain strength and quality. The proportions of the coarse uh, aggregate, cement, and the water should be such that resulting concrete has the following properties. So if I'm going to uh, 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 have cement, sand, coarse aggregate, and the water, I'm going to expect the following. The first property is when the concrete is fresh, which means that the concrete is in the plastic state, it should have enough workability. We talk about the workability. Uh, and uh, if the workability is good, that means placing the concrete in the form work is going to be easy. So if you are going to come up with the proportioning of the concrete, the, your concrete should have enough workability. Otherwise, you are going to have difficulties regarding casting the concrete inside the form work. Also, when the concrete is hardened, which means that the concrete now is in solid state, the concrete must be strong. The, the compressive strength should be high and durable. Durable, it means that the concrete is going to live longer, which means the concrete is going to resist the environmental uh, 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 problems and so on. And finally, the cost. The cost should be as minimum as possible. So the cost of the material should be economical. So you have three conditions uh, in order to have uh, a good mixing. You, ha you need to have uh, a good workability. Uh, the concrete must be strong, uh, strong and durable. And the cost of the material should be uh, as economical as possible. So we need to talk about the activities involved in the construction process of the concrete structures. First, we need to uh, finish with the mixed design or the proportioning process. We need to know how much uh, uh, sand, how much gravel, how much water, and how, how much uh, cement. So this is the first step. After you determine the different amount uh, of the ingredients, then you need to have trial mixes and testing. You need to uh, test whether your mixed design is going to give you the desirable strength or not if that step was successful then we are going to start the batching process the batching process it means that the process of measuring uh, the different uh, ingredients of the concrete in big uh, quantities then after the uh, batching i'm going to start the clock after i'm going to start the clock i'm going to have the mixing I'm going to mix all these ingredients together. Then I'm going to transport the uh, concrete from the concrete plant to the job site. Then I'm going to pour it, 
to pour the concrete or to placing the concrete in the form work. During that process, I need to take sample to make sure that uh, my uh, strength uh, is going to meet the requirement and also the workability is going to meet the requirement. After I place the concrete inside the formwork, I'm going to make compaction or I'm going to vi vibrate the concrete or we call this consolidation. This process is important in order to reduce the voids from the concrete. Now, the process of vibrating and, and, the, and the pouring and transpo uh, transporting should be done before the initial set. So here we are going to start the clock. Here the time is zero, and here the time is the uh, initial set. So all of these processes should be done before the initial set. Why? Because after the initial set, uh, dealing with the concrete, placing the concrete inside the formwork is going to be difficult. Then the finishing process should be done between the initial set and the final set. After the final set, the concrete is going to be hardened concrete. Then, after the concrete became hardened, I need to increase the strength of the concrete by the curing process. In the curing process, I'm going to maintain moisture and a certain temperature for a certain time. By this, uh, by the curing, the hydration process is going to continue, uh, and as a result, the concrete uh, strength is going to increase. The final process is the maintenance. Maybe after five years or 10 years or maybe 20 years, you need to uh, get maintenance for your concrete. If you have a small problem, you need to fix this. So in order to uh, design, uh, to get uh, concrete design, the strength is generally the controlling design factor. So the most important factor in order to uh, get concrete uh, mix, uh, the, the most important factor is the strength. So over the years, many design methods has been developed over the years, ranging from uh, arbitrary volume method, one, two, three, which means that the proportion, if the proportion of the cement is one, that means the proportion of the sand is going to be two, and the proportion of the coarse aggregate is going to be three. Which means that the amount of the sand should be double the amount of the cement, and the amount of the coarse aggregate, the gravel, should be triple uh, amount of the uh, cement. Also, we have uh, the new method. We have the weight method and the absolute volume method. Those methods be described by the American Concrete Institute, ACI, Committee 211. What we will going to learn in this course, we are going to learn how to come up with concrete design using the weight method and the absolute volume method. This one is just random method, the arbitrary volume method. One, two, three. So the weight method provides relatively simple techniques for estimating mixed prop proportions. So we said that we have the weight method and we have the absolute method. The weight method is relatively simple. The techniques for uh, using the uh, weight uh, uh, method is simple. Because we are going to use an assume or non unit weight of concrete. While on the other hand, I have the uh, absolute volume. In the absolute volume, we are not going to use known or assume unit weight. We are going to use the specific gravity of each ingredient to determine or to calculate the unit volume uh, each. And that will occupy in a unit volume of concrete. When we are going to explain the, the method, the picture for you is going to be very clear. The uh, weight method and the absolute volume method, uh, uh, they are similar, except in one step. 
when you are going to determine the amount of the fine aggregate, the uh, the, the method, the, the 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 weight method is going to be different from the uh, absolute volume method. So the mixed design process for the weight and the absolute volume methods differs only on how uh, in how the amount of fine aggregate is determined. It is the only difference between the uh, weight and the absolute method. And it's a big difference. So now we need to see the steps in order to use the weight and the absolute volume method. They have the same steps, but how to uh, use uh, or how to, to, uh, to determine the, the, the step itself uh, is going to be different only in step number nine. In step number nine, we are going to evaluate or determine the fine aggregate requirements. So the process here is going to be different. So let's now see the, uh, uh, the steps, uh, the basic steps required for determining mixed design proportions for the both methods, whether it's weight method or absolute volume method. The first step is to evaluate the strength requirement. Like we said that the strength is the uh, most important factor. Then we are going to determine the water cement ratio or the uh, water uh, cementitious material ratio. Then we are going to evaluate the coarse aggregate requirements and also are going to uh, evaluate the, the, the air entrainment requirement. Remember the air entrainment, we use the air entrainment in case that I have uh, freezing and dewing in my region. Then we are going to evaluate the, the workability requirement of the plastic concrete, the fresh concrete. And also we are going to estimate the water content requirement uh, of the mix because the water content depends on the workability. Then we are going to determine the uh, cementing materials content. Uh, and this step is going to de uh, depends on step number two and step number three. So if you know the water cement ratio and you know the water content, you will be able to determine the uh, cementing materials content and which type need to be used. Also, we are going to evaluate the need and the application rate of admixtures. If you are going to use admixtures, uh, we are going to uh, learn how much admixtures you should put. And finally, the, the last ingredients need to be uh, uh, determined is the fine aggregate requirements. And in that step, the weight and the uh, absolute volume method are going to differ. Finally, we are going to determine the moisture corrections. And after that, of course, I need to make uh, test and trial mixes to make sure that my mix design uh, can meet the requirements. So, do you have any questions up to that point? Do you have any questions up to that point? Okay, let's continue. I have, the, we say that the first step is to evaluate the strength requirement. So now we are going to start the first step. And we discuss the variation in the materials. We say that we have variation in the materials. So if you have sample for the same materials, let's say you have three samples, like you have seen in the lab, I'm not going to get exactly the same uh, uh, compressed strings for each sample. We are going to have variation. And that is due to the nature of the material. So variation in materials and the batching and the mixing of concrete result in deviation in the strength of the concrete produced by a plant. So the concrete that produced by the plant, I'm going to have variation. So if the materials engineer provide a material with an average strength, equal to uh, strengths specified by the designer, then half of the concrete will be weaker than the specified strength. 
So if you have three samples, sample one, two, and three, the strength for sample one is 15 megapascal. The strength for sample two came out to be 20 megapascal. And the uh, strength, uh, the compressive strength for the third sample came out to be 25 megapascal. Now, if you are going to get the average strength, the average strength is going to be 20 megapascal. Now, if you are going as material engineer, if you are going to uh, design the concrete with the average strength that it has been specified by the designer, then the risk that uh, the uh, concrete is going to be lower than the average strength is going to be 50%, which means that half of the concrete will be weaker than the specified strength because you design based on the average strength. So I have a problem here, and that problem is not acceptable. I'm not going to uh, design uh, uh, depends on the average strength specified by the designer because the risk is going to be 50%. So to compensate for the variance in the concrete strength, the material engineer uh, designed the concrete to have an average strength greater than the strength specified by the structural engineer. So the structural engineer is going to give you the average strings. He says that I need average strings for, for example, 20 megapascal. But as material engineer, if I'm going to design based on what the uh, uh, structural engineer or the designer again, based on what he has said, that is going to uh, put me on a risk of 50%. So the solution is I need to design more, more than the average string. So in this case, we are going to uh, uh, see the risk. I need to know the allowable risk. Uh, normally, the allowable risk is going to be 10%. The allowable risk should be 10%. So in order to have a concrete with allowable risk 10%, I need to use a statistical model. I need to use a statistical model. So in order to use a statistical model, we are, uh, model we are going to assume normal distribution. And in order to uh, assume normal distribution, I have to know many informations or uh, three uh, information. First information, I need to know the specified compressive strength. And also I need to know the variability and the standard deviation, S. I need to know the standard deviation. And also I need to know the allowable risk of making concrete with an acceptable strength. So I need to know this, and this, and this. If I'm going to know the uh, allowable risk, I need to know the value of Z. So those who uh, took a statistical method course, they know uh, they are familiar with the value of Z. You have a certain table. If you know the value, if you know the risk, uh, the prob prob probability of the risk, then you will be able to know the value of Z. Then, uh, we are going to assume that the uh, risk should not be less than 10%. So the risk should not be less than 10%. And we are going to use uh, 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 a statistical model, this model here, which means that the required average compressive strings, FCR, this one is a strings as uh, material engineer I'm going to design based on this value. So the uh, FC is the value specified by the designer or the structural engineer. I'm not going to design based on that value. I need to add, uh, I need to design more than that value, but with a, a risk should be uh, less than 10%. Like I said, this formula here depends, or we borrowed this formula from the statistical method. So now, FCR represents the required average compressive strings by megapascal or PCI, FC is a specified compressive strength. So this one, it has been determined by the designer, and this one uh, uh, is going to be the uh, uh, compressive strengths the, uh, the uh, material engineer is going to design with it. So I, I have FCR and I have C plus 1.34. 1.34 represent the value of Z. The value of, of Z depends on the risk. And S represents the standard deviation. So now I'm going the, to sum up all of this. I'm going to design with uh, compressive strings 
more than the average compressive strengths uh, uh, determined by the structural engineer. In order to do that, I'm going to use this formula. Okay, and this formula it has conditions. The value of S should be less than 3.45. If the value of S, which is a standard deviation, is more than uh, is more than 3.45, then I'm going to use another formula borrowed from the statistical method, which is this formula. So if the value of S, the standard deviation, is more than 3.45, I'm not going to use this formula. I'm going to use another formula, which is here. The FCR, the, uh, uh, the compressive strengths specified by the material engineer equal the compressive strengths specified by the structural engineer plus 2.33 S. S is the uh, uh, standard deviation minus 3.45. So if the uh, 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 standard deviation more than 3.45, then I'm going to use this formula here. If you, if you are confused about which formula should I use, should I use formula 1 or formula 2, in that case, use the both formulas. Uh, substitute in the first formula and in the second formula. Then use the larger result. So this formula will yield a, a, a result, and this formula also will yield a result. Use the larger uh, uh, value. So the required Average compressive strings, FCR, is determined as the larger value obtained from equations uh, 7.1 and 7.2. So if you are confused, use the, uh, uh, this formula. This formula is 7.1 and this formula, which is 7.2. And uh, the formula that is going to give you the larger value, you are going to use that larger value. And in order to use uh, uh, these two formulas, you have condition for that. The standard deviation should be determined for, for, from at least 30 strings tests. So I have condition for those formula. Uh, uh, the standard deviation, of course, you are going to determine the standard deviation based on the number of these samples from the concrete plant. And the number of samples should be at least 30 uh, samples. Otherwise, I have other options for that. I need to correct the value of the standard deviation. So if the numbers uh, of the, of the uh, specimen is more than 30 samples, then I need to apply uh, a, a correction factor for the standard deviation. Let's see the standard uh, the uh, correction factor. If the standard deviation is computed from 15 to 30 samples, so if your samples between 15 and 30, then a standard deviation is multiplied by the following factor, correcting factor F. Of course, if the, your sample is more than 30, you don't need that factor, which means that the factor is 1. If your sample is 25, then you need to uh, multiply the uh, standard deviation by 1.03. If your sample is 20, then you are going to apply 1.08. If your sample is 15, then you are going to apply 1.16 as a modification factor. So you are going to use this formula, but the value of S should be multiplied by the factor. For example, if your sample is 25 sample, then the value of S should be multiplied by uh, 1.03. So now, what if the, uh, uh, your sample is fewer than 15 samples or 15 tests? In that case, I'm not going to use this formula at all. I'm going to use uh, different formulas, either this formula or that formula or that formula. You are going to use this formula if the com specified compressive strings is less than 21. You are going to use this formula here if your specified compressive strength is between 21 to 35. You are going to use this formula here if your specified compressive strength is more than 35. So to summarize this, if your samples is more than 30 samples, 
in that case i'm going to use this formula and that formula and then i'm going to use the larger value if your samples between 15 and 30 if your samples between 15 and 30 then i'm going to apply a modific modification factor for the value of the standard deviation if your samples is less than 15 test in that case i'm going to use new formulas either this formula or that formula or that formula depends on the specified compressive to make the picture clear for you let's see this example this example will help you to understand what i have uh, mentioned in the previous uh, slides in this in this example the design engineer specified a concrete strength of 21 mega pascal this value it has been uh, specified by the design engineer then it says that determine the required average strength for uh, case 1, case A, case B, case C, case D. So we need to know the compressive strengths for the material engineer. So the value here for the designer engineer. We know that for the material engineer, we need to use a value more than this value. For case number 1, he said that your plant is a new plant for which S is unknown. So now you don't know the value of S. The, the plant is a new plant. If your plant is new plant, that means you don't have sample at all. You don't have any sample. So in this case, I'm going to say that the number of sample is less than 15 tests. So in this case, I'm going to use this or this or this formula. Depends on the specified compressive string. So let's see what is the value of the specified compressive string. The specified of compressive string is 31. So here, 31. 31 is between 21 and 35. So in this case, I'm going to use this formula here. So now the value of FCR is going to equal the value of FC plus 8.5. The value of FC is 31. So 31 plus 8.5 is going to give you the value of uh, FCR. So uh, for uh, case A, the value of FCR is going to equal FC plus 8.5. The value of FC is here, 31. So 31 plus 8.5 came out to be 39.5 megapascal. So now that the, the, the material engineer is going to design with this value. Now I have case B. In case B, a plant for which the value of S, now we know the value of the standard deviation, uh, came out to be 3.6 megapascal. For how many samples? I have uh, 17 test results. So I have 17 sample. So in this case, what should I do? So in this case, since I'm going to get back here, uh, the number of sample is 17, which means that the number of sample is between 15 and 30. And the number of sample is seven, uh, 17. So 17 is going to be between uh, 15 and 20. In this case, I'm going to use interpolation. In that case, I'm going to put 17, and the value of this is going to be x. I'm going to uh, tables, and uh, then I'll be able to determine the value of x. We have done this in the lab so many times, so uh, I think most of you are familiar with the interpolation. So, because the value of 17 is not listed in the table, I need to uh, make in interpolation. So I'm going to correct the value of S for this formula and for that formula. So the value of S should be multiplied by the modification uh, factor. So this is the value of the modification factor. We say that we need to interpolate because the value of 17 is not listed in the table. Uh, the mod modification factor came out to be 1.13. So the value of S, which is 3.6, should be multiplied by 1.13. The value of S come out to be 4.1 mega Pascal. Then I'm going to use the first formula, this formula, and the second formula, and I'm going to get the larger value. So here I'm going to use the first formula, and I'm going to use the second formula. But I'm going to use the modified standard deviation. And now which one is bigger? The, the second formula is, is, is the bigger formula. 
So I'm going to use this value here. Or if you are clever, you are going to say that since the value of 3.6, this value is more than uh, 3.45. So this formula should give me the larger value. Okay. So if you are if you are not sure, you are going to use the first formula and the second formula, and you are going to use the uh, larger uh, value. Uh, similarly, here in plant C, uh, they say that the plant with extensive history, extensive history, that means the plant produced many samples. The samples is going to be more than 30 samples, and the value of S came out to be 2.4. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to say that since I have extensive history. The number of samples is going to be more than 30 uh, samples. I'm going to use the first formula and the second formula, and I'm going to use the larger value. Of course, the, the value of S here, 2.4, is less than 3.45, which means that the first formula is going to give me the larger value. Finally, number D, uh, the plant with expensive history of producing concrete, which means that extensive history, the number of samples more than 30 which means that I'm going to use the first formula and the second formula, and then I'm going to use a larger value. But again, if you are clever, you know that the value of S is 3.8, which is more than 3.45, which means that the second formula is going to give me the larger value. Uh, I'm going to stop here at that point. I'm going to give you the floor for uh, questions.